Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily. We were lucky enough to be invited along to Pembrokeshire in Wales for a DMM sponsored rope rescue weekend. Now on the second day it poured it down with rain so we took the opportunity to grab a DMM expert and ask him some geeky questions for the gear show. Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show, the show where we get super geeky about gear, which is useful because I've got Ben here. Ben is one of the technical and athlete experts from DMM. Uh, we discussed your job description, but that sounds about right-ish. It's a bit vague, but uh, yeah, you've, you've pretty much got it there. You're the man at DMM, basically. Yeah. CEO, It'd chief. Apart. It'd fall apart without me. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Um, we get asked a lot about uh, guide style belay plates and specifically what you've got in your hand which is the DMM pivot because it's a little bit different from a lot of belay plates on the market at the moment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, particularly as a, as a UK climber like myself, guide belay devices uh, you know, seem quite new. They're not something we're maybe as used to as, as the Euro guys. But the pivot you know, works in very much the same way as, as traditional guide belay devices. Obviously you can use it just as a normal belay device in, in the standard mode off your belay loop. And again, you can, you can rig it exactly the same as a, as a guide device, so you get all those advantages. You know, you've used devices like that living in Chamonix. Yeah, well, well let's, let's step back a bit, because for example, I use a black diamond guide belay yeah. plate. But for people who don't know what the difference is between a normal ATC and a guide style ATC belay plate, can you just explain when and where you would use a guide belay plate? Yeah, so like I say, you can use it just like a normal one. So when somebody's leading a pitch, you'd, you'd rig it up on your belay loop and, and exactly as with a normal ATC or DMM version, um, you'd use it in, in that way. Um, where they really come into their own is when you've led a pitch and you're bringing up your second or seconds, because they're particularly useful when you're, you're climbing a, say, a team of three. Um, I guess the, the name got turned because guides you know, started using this style device a lot. So as long as you've got a, a really solid belay with a nice central point, you would actually clip the guide device directly into that, that central point of the belay. Um, so you would be, as the leader, you would be separately secured to the system. This would then be dangling off that central point. You then put the rope through it in exactly the same setup as normal and clip them with your, your beaner here. Um, and, and you're taking care of it kind of rigged off the belay. Um, where the big advantages are is if somebody falls off, the weight isn't directly onto you and the devices lock really well. Not, you know, it's not a hands-free device, but there's, there's much less pressure to control them like that. Um, it's very easy to belay two people at once, um, even to the degree where if one person falls off and is hanging, you can still actually take in on the second rope, which obviously if that was on your on your belay device, that would be a really hard thing to do. Moving on to the pivot, because uh, this is something we get asked an awful lot about, um, because it is different. Why do you think it's a better style of device? So I guess a couple of the minor ones is things like weight um, and its bulk. You know, with the pivot you're able to make it a little bit less bulky. Um, but in my mind, the main benefit is when you're using it in guide mode, particularly when if you have to lower somebody a little bit, um, you know, the joy of, of a guide device is it almost locks off. You know, you do still, like, a, like we've mentioned a couple of times, you do still need to hold on, but you know, it, it virtually locks for you. Um, so then if it comes to lowering someone down, because, it, because it's locked, you can't just feed it through your hand. Um, so to release the device, you end up having to, well, I think we'll potentially demonstrate this a little bit more in a minute. Um, if I just put one in here, so it'll be, it'll be hanging off the belay here, and the ropes are in it. And to release the device, you actually have to bend it and, and kind of release it like this while holding onto the rope and controlling it still and it can be quite a lot of force to do that um, it can be end up being quite a jerky maybe not controlled lower okay i understand because i've even had to attach a sling onto my uh my normal guide plate to someone standing to, to push down to lower the climber down um, and it's not and, and as you said if they also situations where the climbers climbed up a little bit too high and they've just misread a route and they need to go down like a foot for example it's a nightmare on a plate normally yeah. okay so now that should potentially solve all those yeah, issues yeah for all of those so you know with, with a guide mode device you're unlikely to be lowering people a full pitch you know that it, that might happen but in general it might be just they've climbed a little bit higher they want to just lower down to the correct route or they just want to lower back down to a little rest point you know all of those things so yeah it means that we we have you know got the got the hole here so that you know, it can still be a little bit tricky to control. 
Um, so by adding in a beaner into it, you've got you've essentially got a handle. Um, so you still, you know, would use that, but hopefully you wouldn't have to put a, a sling into here and you know stand yeah. on it with your foot. Okay, cool. Well, that's it in theory. Uh, it's hard to get it when it's in your hand. So what we're going to do is, is change this setup. Uh, we're in this climbing wall somewhere in Pembrokeshire, which is nice. So we can rig something on the wall and see this in action. So back to you in a sec. Okay, so we've set up a little mini setup here. Uh, we're pretending that the climbing holds are bolts in this situation. So uh, Ben, you're into uh, one equalized bolt setup with your rope, and then you've set up the pivot on a direct belay onto the anchors. Yep. Um, so I'll let you talk this through now and just explain how the whole thing works. Okay, so just to reinforce your point there, this would be your, your central belay point. You clip your, your pivot or guide mode device in like that, so into the, the actual pivot point in the case of R1, obviously with a screw gate into that central point. You'd then pull up the ropes to your, to your seconds until it's tightened them, and you'd put the ropes in in exactly the same way as with a normal guide device or with a normal belay device off your, you know, off your belay loop. So the ropes, the dead ends, can, which go to your hands, are from the point which in most devices now have the grooves, which you know, have the variable friction, and the ends which go to the climbers out of the top. You then clip a screw gate between the ropes and that's your, your device in guide mode. So this is going down to the climber? Yes. So, so if I hold that? Yep. So these two ends are, are to the climber or climbers and this is the, I guess the term would be the dead end. Shall I go back a bit and you can show us how to take in on, on the system? Yeah, 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 sure. So when somebody's climbing up, you know, obviously you'd, you'd feel them moving. So you'd just take them like this. You know, trying to find whatever system works for you for keeping your, your hands on the dead rope. Okay, so for, apart from the fact that it's nice and light and it's a lovely blue colour, which I like a lot, it's acted like my guide belay play I use. So can we see the pivot in action pivoting now? So if I put some pressure down on here and then pretend like you're going to lower the climber down. Cool, yeah, we can do that. So you're pulling there, obviously replicating the rate, uh, weight of the climber. Now, you know, the issue is that if I let go or try to feel it through my hands here, you know, as with, with most guide belay devices, you, you know, you as a climber aren't going down. Um, so you have to release that load. So, you know, the initial thing you try is, is to do it like that. And obviously, you go, I'm, I'm sure you're pretty strong, <laughs> but potentially with your arm where you're not doing the full weight of a climber or two climber. So that's where we might add in the extra little handle. Um, so I'll try and make it so you can, you can see it. So again, like that. and you can see how it's pivoting here. Um, so it's bending around around that point, rotating around that point. And we talked, touched on this earlier, when you have a normal guide belay plate, which is all rigid, you sometimes have to stick a sling in, kind of stand on it just to get enough leverage to lower them down. But that does seem very smooth. It seems very, very easy to do that. And, and I suppose in a stressful situation, because the second's fallen off, they're probably having a bad time. Um, you don't want to have that moment of calling down and being like, just give me a sec, you know, I've just got to rig something and it's all gets a bit faffy. So I guess that takes just, this is an easy way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, you know, it's easier, it's quicker. You know, in most cases, you can you can actually just do it by by hand, um, or you just add a beaner in, and that would be plenty. Um, and, and again, again, I touched on it before. The actual action of the lowering, because it's an easier system, you know, you're using less force to do it. You're able to control that rope a lot easier. You know, there's less kind of jerking, less potentially oh, dropping it a little bit, anything like that. Um, so it makes the whole process, yeah, a lot a lot easier. Cool. Well, that, that's been good for me because, as I said, I use a black diamond one. It's very solid. It works fine but I've never actually used the pivot. So it's nice to see it in action and see that ease of movement and how simple it is. Um, anything that can make my climbing life simple, I, I'm a fan of, because I make the climbing bit as complicated as possible usually. <laughs> so, that's, that's just you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's true, it's true. Uh, thank you very much, Ben, appreciate that. Um, if you guys are interested in more information, I'll put some links down in the description below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.